So you want to shoot HDR photography on your Canon M50, but you don't know how to. Well, today I'm going to show you how to set your camera up to shoot HDR, otherwise known as auto exposure bracketing. Now there's two ways to approach HDR with your Canon M50. The first way is using the auto HDR modes. Now on your camera dial, you're going to see like two little intersecting circles. That's actually the creative mode. Now once you've set your dial to the creative mode and you look on your LCD, you're going to see an icon on the top left corner of your LCD. If you hit that, in my case, it's this little camera icon. You simply hit that or you could go into the menu on section one, the very first option, shooting mode you can access it there as well. Now, once you're in there, look for HDR and you're gonna see the first one, HDR Art Standard. You can pause it and read it. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, but I have an image here where I tested out this setting. Just be aware that it's gonna take JPEGs and basically what the camera does, it takes three bracketed shots meaning you have your properly exposed image. You're going to have one that's slightly underexposed and one that's overexposed. And the camera is going to combine them into one high dynamic range image. The problem with doing it in automatic, it saves it as a JPEG. So if you want to further edit it, you're already losing detail. So we're going to look at that example. And you see, it's this example is not too bad, especially in the skies here. It's not the best scenery. Then we have the second option that's called HDR Art Vivid. And when I use this option on the M50, we see that it's got just a bit more contrast, a bit more color and a little bit more alive. And it's almost got that painted look, right? The next two I will tell you is a little overkill and it really depends on how you use it and what image you're shooting. But this one's called HDR Art Bow. And basically, as I say here, it's like a painting with very vivid and deep colors with the same picture in my example. Now it starts to look like it's over sharpened. Even the contrast is a little too much, but you think this is bad. <laughs> Look at the HDR art embossed version. And again, like this is the wrong use for this. But my point is, is that when you use the auto HDR, you don't really have that flexibility. So my recommendation would for you to number one, shoot in raw and do your settings manually. So back to the dial, we want to switch it to M for manual. And then within the menu in section one, first, if you're not already in raw, you want to change your image quality to raw. And while we're here, we're going to set our drive mode to either the self timers or the high speed continuous option. Now, why you need this is because once you click that shutter, it needs to take three photos. So if you're going to use the high speed continuous handheld, for example, you simply half press to focus and then press and hold, and the camera's gonna shoot a burst of three pictures. Now, I recommend a tripod or at least a stable surface and use one of the self timers, either 10 or two seconds. That way you mitigate any other risk of shake, you know, from your hands or any slight movement. It comes down to personal choice, but I highly recommend the self timers. Now we're going to head over to section two in the menu. The first option there, you're going to see Expo Comp, that means exposure compensation, slash AEB, which means auto exposure bracketing. We want to click OK there or set. And then you're going to come across this screen, and this is where we're going to set up our bracketing. Now to set the bracketing, you can either click on the LCD screen, those two little symbols, the AEB there and that other symbol on the right that looks like a feather. <laughs> you can increase or decrease your bracketing there, or you can use the camera's shutter dial and you basically just move it with your finger to rotate it. And once you do that, you're going to see the bracket start to change. Now it's up to you if you want to go one stop overexposure, two stop 
perhaps overexposure or underexposure or in between. It's really up to you, but you will get three photos from your brackets. Now, once you've set your bracket, make sure to click on set. And that's that little button on, you know, the circle <laughs> at the back. And then back in the menu, you're now going to see three little blue bars underneath the numbers, right? And that means that your bracket is set. So let's fast forward to after you've taken your HDR images. What you need to do, obviously, is bring them into your computer and then use a program like Affinity Photo, Luminar Neo, Photoshop, they all have HDR capabilities. So I'm just going to go into file here. There's an option here. It says new HDR merge. Once I click on that, we get this option here to add my images. Now I'm only going to use three images. So we'll click on add. So I'm going to select these three photos, click open, and you'll see the images brought in here. There's an option here to auto align the images. I'm going to leave it at perspective. I'm going to click on automatically remove ghosts because there were people in the scene moving around. I'm leaving it at 40% in terms of the noise reduction. And then tone map HDR image. We're going to click on that and simply press OK. So what's happening now? Affinity Photo is taking those three bracketed images and making them one image. You know, when we looked at the, the method to do it in camera, it creates a JPEG, which is a compressed file that you can still edit, but you don't have as much detail. With this method, you still start with a raw photo and you can make adjustments to your photo with all the detail. And with HDR, it's typically in the shadows and the highlights in contrast and even saturation okay and you're gonna see this as we play around with the settings take a look at the sky here that's an amazing sky so that's the beauty of HDR you can get that nice dynamic range across so if you look at the histogram here other than this peak of blue because of the sky it's fairly even across the board and as we look at the image it's pretty good exposure a few hot spots we can adjust but there's so much detail in there and to be super honest with with you just this raw version I would probably be happy with that and make some small adjustments the way this works is that at least in a affinity photo there's some presets here and at the top we have default extreme crazy James Ritson customs let's look at the detailed one so it emphasizes a lot of the detail brings out a bit of the contrast but look at the sky there and let's compare it to natural it's a bit more muted not as much detail in the like contrast and in the shadows we switch it to here it's just got a bit more to it and you really have to be careful with HDR because it could look really bad too <laughs> so if we look at this cool example it's a lot more more cooler, more in the bluish tones. Here's a black and white high contrast version. And then this one is dramatic where it's like oversaturated, very vivid, very dramatic as it's called, right? So those are a few examples under James Ritson. There's some really cool ones here. Red Shade, Urban Gift, Urban Grit. <laughs> now this particular look I quite like. Now I would adjust it a little bit. So that's kind of just the quick workflow from camera to software. Let me know if you want a dedicated video on HDR editing in either Affinity Photo or Luminar Neo. I'll probably do them both regardless. But again, if you have any questions for the Canon M50 specifically on setting up your camera for, for bracketing, let me know in the comments below. And in case you're wondering how to use your M50 with manual or vintage lenses, make sure to check out this video. Until the next video, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.